All right, good evening, everybody. Uh, welcome to our P4 year end revision series. This is lesson one. Uh, my name is Mr. Siu, I'm from Math Accelerator. So, without waiting any further, I think we should start our lesson. Do you think so? All right. So, if you're ready to start, say yes. Let me have some energy, right? Okay, thank you. So, now I'm Mr. Siu, I'm from Math Accelerator Center. So, um, Thank you for coming in. <clears throat> so welcome to our first lesson. Uh, before we start, right, please allow me to uh, give a short introduction about who we are and what we do. So we are um, from Math Accelerator Center. So we are a math specialist center where we help students with borderline grades. Okay? We turn their results around within a short time. So we are situated in uh, Marine Parade Central uh, in a building called Parkway Center. How many of you stay in the east? Do you happen to know where is Parkway Center? If you do, you can say yes, right? Or not sure, say no, right? Mm. Okay, thank you. Okay, great. Now the reason why uh, we have this series is we wanted to help students who are struggling in mathematics, right? Especially with problem sums. Uh, most of the students uh, like you um, who are struggling in maths, they do not have a systematic approach in identifying the keywords in the question. So, and applying the right strategies to arrive at the answers. So we want to help students improve, number one, their understanding. And number two, regain their confidence in tackling problem sums. So in the next few, uh, in the next hour, right, we'll be showing you how problem sums can be solved in a very systematic manner. Okay, easy to follow, number one, and systematic. So why are we doing this? Because year end, the, on the fourth week of October, you'll be starting your SA2, right? So SA2 is, in, is an important year end exam. So we want to help you be better prepared. So the lesson outline is as, as such. Today we will be doing whole numbers. And in this revision on whole numbers, we'll be sharing with you uh, two strategies on problem sums. And later on, we'll be sharing some questions on higher order thinking questions. Those questions are typically those questions that you have found in section C of your year end paper. How many of you have your worksheet already? Okay, if you have your worksheet, can you type WS so I know that you're following me? Okay, WS stands for worksheet, right? Uh, if you do not have the worksheet, also let me know so that later I can send to you. All right? Okay, good. <clears throat> so, now, we also find, have a lot of feedback from students, right? They, they say they have facing a lot of issues with problem sums and so on. So can you let me know what is your number one problem? Okay, what is the number one issue when you're solving problem sums? Okay, I give you a few suggestions. Okay, let me write on the screen over here. Is it, is it hard for you to identify the keywords? Okay, or strategies. You, know, you understand the question, but you do not know which strategy to solve, right? And, okay, or you know how to use a strategy, but you don't know which model to draw, right? Uh, so these are some of the things that uh, facing students are facing problem, right? If you are facing problem with keywords, right, can you type K, KW, right? That's number one. If you are facing problem with strategy, type ST, right? If you're facing problem with models, type MD. Hey, let me know which is the one that you are facing problems with. Mm, I see a lot of you are facing problem with strategies and model, right? Okay, most of you have no issues identifying keywords. That's great, right, model. So later on, I'll be paying more attention to model drawing so that you'll be, have, you have a better picture of what is the right strategy and the kind of models that you should be using to approach the question, right? Before we uh, get started with the questions, 
So here are some ground rules that I would like you to follow. Right, number one, uh, all the audios are muted because we have a big audience today. So communication with us is primarily through chat. So please participate actively where you can ask questions, right? Then you can answer questions. Number three, please no spamming on the chat. Huh? Please be considerate. Okay, a lot of people here do not spam it, right? That makes us very uncomfortable. Okay, we want to have a fun learning environment, do we? Correct? And number <clears throat> and next, next, please. So the lastly, please listen attentively, write down the solutions and have fun along the way. All right, we want to have fun while learning, right? So, okay, good. Is everybody ready? Then we shall begin. Right, let's get started. Okay, today we're going to go through two strategies over here, right? The first one will be repeated identity and the second one will be constant difference, right? First one is repeated identity, second is constant difference, and thirdly, we'll be solving some high order thinking questions. So, in repeated identity, you need to follow these four simple steps, right? First, you identify the keywords and draw the model, okay? Make sure that all the items are related to the smallest unit. Later, I'll put this, uh, I'll minimize this so that we can see it better. So, and find the value associated with one unit. And lastly, solve for the answers. So what do you mean by this? Let's go through the strategy number one. Okay, example. In this question, okay, we're going to draw some re <clears throat> comparison model to help us understand this question. Let's see. Okay, a bag consists of 135 green, red, and blue balls. There are six times as many blue balls as red balls and thrice as many blue balls as green balls. How many red balls were there in the bag? Right, so from here, we know that there are three colors. So please underline that the total is one, three, five. Please go ahead, okay, once you have your worksheet. And the second important keyword is here. There are six times as many blue balls as red. And the third one tells us that there are twice as many blue balls as green. So can you tell me of these three colors, right, which one would be the smallest unit? Is it red, green, or blue? Right. Okay, there's many answers. Like red, right, a lot of people will say it's red. Let's see whether it's really red. Right. <clears throat> so there are six times as many blue as red. So if you draw blue, let's try to visualize this using model. Okay, you can follow along the way. Huh? So we have six times as many blue as red. So the blue, we will have six units. And the red, we have one unit. The next important keyword is twice as many blue balls as green balls. So if blue balls, we have six units here. Let's write on top six units. Can you tell me how many units do I draw for green? How many units must I draw for green? Remember, we have more blue. Ah, yes, please. Please write down on your paper, okay, on your worksheet. <clears throat> so, all right, I can see a lot of answers. Two or three, right? We have two from, okay, there are some who give two, some who give three. So let's see. Twice as many blue as green means we have more blue compared to green. Now, blue, we have six units. It's three times of green. So if you want to find green, right, we take six units. Divide by three, right? Because it's twice. It's three times. We divide by three and we get two units. All right, congratulations to all those who are able to give me two units. 
So here, green, there are two units. All okay, can follow so far? Right, the next thing. So blue, we have six units. Red, we have one unit. Green, we have two units. Can you tell me what's the total number of balls for all three colors? Right, thank you, Lloyd. Thank you, Jesseline. It is 135 as stated in the question over here. Right. Congratulations to everybody who got it. Now, can you count for me how many units are there when we total up the blue, the red, and the green? Okay. Okay, we have answers from Lloyd. We have answers from Rex, Anjali, and a lot of people are giving nine. Okay, good. So we have three, six units here, plus three here is nine units. So nine units is 135. So if nine units is 135, can you help me find the value of one unit? All right, thank you, Lloyd. Okay, so help me divide and let me know the answer. So we take 135, we divide by 9. Are you, wow, most of you are so fast. Are you using a calculator or you manual calculation? Huh? At P6, you're supposed to use manual, at P4, you're supposed to use manual, right? Mm. So 135, divide by 9. So first, 1 times 9, so here minus we get 45. Wow, mental, good job. So then here is 5. 5 times 9 is 45. So the answer is 15. All right, everybody, those who got 15, congratulations. So now can you answer the question, how many red balls were there in the bag? So we have one unit here, therefore the answer is? 15. All right, good job. So now, okay, so this is how we're going to do this, uh, approach this style question is compar using comparison model, right, to solve this question. So next, can I move on to question two? Okay, if you're ready to move to question two, right, can you type Q2, right, question two, which is stands for question two, right, uh, or all right, thank you everybody. So anybody need me to wait and copy or not? Do you need to copy anything over here? No, right? Okay, if not, let's move on to question two. Right, question two, it says here, Mary, Becky and Tina collected some dolls. Mary had four times as many dolls as Tina. Becky has twice as many dolls as Tina. If Mary had eight more dolls than Becky, how many dolls did the girl collect in total? All right, so we have some keywords that we need to underline first. So we have three person here. And Mary is four times as many as Tina. And Becky is twice of Tina. So let's draw the first one, right? This is a good way to start the question, right? Help us visualize the comparison between Mary and Tina. So everybody, they start drawing. So we have four units because it says four times, right? Comparing Mary and Tina. So Mary must have four units. Tina will have one unit. Becky has twice as many dolls as Tina. So help me out. If Tina is one unit, how many units must I draw for Becky? All right, thank you, Lloyd and Namira. Okay, Anjali also, Rex, everybody got it. So we need to draw two units because of the keyword twice. So now, we were told that Mary had eight more compared to Becky. 
So this eight dolls is equals to how many units? We know Mary has four units. We know Becky has two units. So four minus two. We know that Mary has two more units compared to Becky. These are the two units. So these two units is equals to eight. Right? So if two units is eight, can you tell me what's the value of one unit? Okay. So we take eight, we divide by two, and we arrive at four, right? Okay, I can see a lot of correct answers. All right, thank you, Amara. Thank you, Simran. Okay, Jasleen as well as Namira. Okay, the rest I okay. Thank you for your participation so far. That's good. Keep up the energy. So lastly, how many dolls did the girls collect in total? Now, without me prompting you, right? Can you give me the answers? Give me the final answer. Right, thank you, Amber. Thank you, Amara. Okay, thank you, Diva. So what is your calculation to arrive at your answer? What do you do? Can you share with me? Okay, so in total, we need to find how many units are there, right? In total. So in total, we have four plus three here is seven units. So therefore, seven times four, and we will have 28. So 28 will be our answer to this question. Okay. All right, seems like everybody is able to do it. That's great. Anybody needs to copy? Can you give some, take some time and uh, copy this out before we move on to our next set of comparison model? Mm, no need. <clears throat> okay, if you're ready. Okay, so let's go through this question one more time before we move on further. So a lot of the times, right, students are confused with the comparison keyword, okay, of four times and twice and how they should do it. So what I would advise students is, remember, well, based on the first statement, are you able to visualize it? Okay, which we can. Okay, Mary has four times as many dolls as Tina. That means Mary has four units, Tina has one unit. So the next line tells us Becky has twice as many dolls as Tina. So if Tina is one, Becky is twice, Becky must have two units. So every line, we try to help ourselves, uh, help ourselves to understand this question by visualizing it and doing a simple comparison between what's written in the question with the model that we are drawn here, right? So from here, we should be able to systematically get the answer. Right, any question for me? If there's no question, can you type question three or Q3? All right, thank you. So let's move on to question three. So this is question three, Danny and Alice. So in this question, let me read to you first. Danny and Alice has 240 cartons, cartoon cards. Alice and Cindy has 320 cartoon cards. If Cindy has thrice as many cards as Danny, how many cards did Alice have? All right. So in this question, what should we do? First of all, let's underline the keywords. Danny and Alice has 240 cards. Alice and Cindy has 320 cards. The next comparison tells us that Cindy has twice as many cards as Danny. So how many cards did Alice have? Right, so these are the, some of the keywords that we have over here. Now, can you tell me based on the first two statements, which person is repeated in the comparison? 
right? Can you spot who is the person repeated? Okay, that's called the repeated identity. So you should be able to spot that. Okay, good job everybody. You are able to see that it is Alice. Right, Alice and Danny is 240. Alice and Cindy is 320. So we know Alice is featured in both. So what we do is, what I normally do is, so the first one is D plus E. The second one is uh, C plus E. Okay, I'll be arranged in this order. So we have Alice first. So Alice won't change, right? So we draw two equal model that indicates Alice. Then the next one is we will draw Cindy and Danny. So based on this statement, it says that Cindy has thrice as many cards as Danny. So in this case, we will draw Cindy, that is three times. And Danny is once. Right. We can also indicate that this is Danny. So maybe I use a different color pen. So this is Danny. And here is Cindy. Let's add more information to our model. First, we know that Danny and Alice is 240. So 240. We also know that Cindy and Alice is 320. So how are we going to solve this question? Anybody have any clue? Any idea? Right, so you know that we need to take, a lot of you have suggested that we take 320 minus 240. Can you tell me the difference between these two numbers is how many units? Right, how many units is that? Right, two units. Okay, good job. So here is two units. Right, this is two units. And these two units is equals to <clears throat> so let me write clearly over here, 320 minus 240, that will give us 80. So from here, can you help me find what's the value of one unit? Okay, one unit, thank you Rex. <clears throat> so 80 divided by 2, we'll get 40. Right, 40. So now that we know the value of one unit, let's go back to the question. It states that how many cards did Alice have? Can you help me find out how many cards does Alice have? Now that we know that one unit is 40. Right. Very good. So what we need to do is now that we know that one unit is 40, so we know that this unit is 40. In order to find Alice, we will take 240 minus 40, right? So that will give us 200. Right, how many of you have the answer of 200 just like me? You can type me too, right? Okay, good job. Okay, those who are following my instruction and you are clear, you type follow, right? That means you are following me step by step. Okay, thank you, Jaslyn. Thank you, Afik. Okay, can I give you 30 seconds to copy the solution? Okay, while I summarize what we have just, uh, we have just done. Okay, so we, first of all, we read the question. Then we, second, we highlight some of the important key information, right? The keywords in this question, which will include 240 cards for both Danny and Alice and 320 cards for Alice and Cindy. Cindy has thrice. So thrice is an important keyword, as many cards as Danny. This is a comparison. So we also discuss which is the repeated identity, which we are able to identify that is Alice. Okay, Alice over here. Alice is the repeated identity. 
So that's how we started off with drawing the equal model for at least, right? Draw an equal unit for at least on both comparison. Next, okay, we zoom in on the keywords here. In these keywords, we've, we identified that Cindy has thrice as many cards compared to Danny. So thrice means three unit and one unit. So once we have all the information, we're quite clear that we need to find the value of two units. Okay, the value of these two units is the difference between 320 and 240. So once we've got that sorted out, we realize that two units is equal to 80. So one unit, 80 divided by two, we get 40. Always remember, a lot of students will stop once they get one unit. Right, they only get one unit, then they stop there. So what we need to do is, once we get the value of one unit, we need to go back to ask, check what the question uh, requires. It says that how many cards does Alice have? So Alice is here, so it's as easy as 240 minus 40. Then Alice has 200. Okay, if you are okay and you're ready, can you type question four? Then we move on to the next question. Okay, let's move on to the next question over here. <clears throat> so let me read to you one more time. So in question four, it says that there are 180 blue and green balls in bag A. There are 320 green and red balls in bag B. Given that there are twice as many red, as red balls as blue balls, and the number of green balls in both bags is the same, find the number of green balls in both bags. Right, after we have gone through the question once, let's underline some of the key information here. So there are 180 blue and green. So that's in bag A. So there are 320 red and green in bag B. The next is the comparison, twice as many red as blue. So the green balls in both bags are the same. And then we find the total number of green balls in the bag. Can you tell me, based on the first two statements, which color is repeated? Which color is repeated? Right, green. Right, green. So green is repeated. So same thing like the previous question. So if green is repeated, we will have we write a green. Okay, we draw a same box for both, right? Right, next. The first comparison is blue and green. So I just write blue plus green. The second comparison is green plus red. So we will I like to put green at the end, right? So red plus green. So now we need to draw, we have green drawn out already. So the next one we need to draw is the blue and red. So according to this question, it says that there are twice as many red as blue. So red will be three units. And blue will be one unit. The next step, let's draw, let's fill up with the rest of the info, in, information over here. So blue and green is 180. Red plus green is 320. Can somebody help me find the value of these two units? There are two units here, right? Let me know what's the value of these two units. Okay, thank you. Lloyd, we might want to recalculate. I don't think your answer is correct. Mm. Thank you. So these two units is equals to 320 minus 180. So it will give us 140. So if two units are 140, right? 
Can you help me work out what's the value of one unit? Okay, what's the value of this one unit over here? Hmm. Okay, thank you, Evangeline. I saw your answer. So Namira, thank you. Right, Braden, right. So 140 divided by two, you will get 70. So now that we find that one unit is equal to 70, let's go back to the question. We want to find the total number of green balls in both bags. Right, let's find the green balls in one bag first. Right. So how many green balls are there in the first bag? So let's put the letter G here, E E N. So one bag is 180 minus we know that this part is 70 right so therefore 180 minus 70 we will have 110 now is 110 the final answer that's the thing i want to find out from you yes or no it's a yes no question please let me know All right now, if it's no, right, then what should we be looking out for? Then what should be the correct answer? What should be the correct answer? Do you know the answer? Both bags, right? They say both bags is a key word. Just now I purposely left it out, right? Both bags. So now if it's both bags, each bag has 110. What's our final answer? Okay. So each bag has 110 green. The total of number of green balls in both bags. So we have to take 110, multiply by two, right? And you will have 220. So 220 will be your answer for question four, because it asks to find the total number of green balls in both bags. Can you let me know? How many of you have 220? Just like me, you can type me too. Right? So those who are following, can you, yeah, and you understand my explanation, can you type follow, right? Or you can put the letter F. Okay, great, great. Okay, so now I give you some time to copy out the solution while I read, okay, we summarize, let me summarize what we have just completed. So first we, we highlighted, after reading one round, we highlighted the, some of the important keywords, which includes 180 and 320. Okay, this is for both sets of uh, balls. We also underline price. Okay, this is a comparison between the number of red and blue. Then we were told that the number of green balls in both bags are the same. So this important keywords here. So we are told to find the total number of green balls in both bags. Now, blue and green, 180 first, we, we also identified that the green is repeated. So that makes, then we start drawing our model. So we started off by drawing the green first, right? One set of green here, then the second, Comparison also we draw a set of green here. Then based on these important keywords that say tries, we are able to identify that the red balls is tries or blue. So blue is one unit, red will be three units. So after we completed the model, we add in the numbers, the total for both sets of uh, combination. So from here, we are able to find that two units is equal to 140 and one unit is 70. So we're able to calculate that the number of green balls in each bag is 110. So there's a tricky part here that says both bags. So if one bag is 110, both bags will be 220. So far so good, everybody. Right.
So, okay, so now, can you help me to, so we're going to move on to another set of problem sums already. So if you're okay, can you type page four? Then we move on to the next question. Okay, thank you, Amara. So I'm going to clear out my screen and move to the next question. So the next question, uh, next strategy that we're going to do is called constant difference. It's about whole, it's one of the whole number strategies involving H. Now, when you talk about H, right, the difference in H between two person won't change over time. Example, if me and my mom, our difference is 20 years this year, right? What's the difference between me and my mom's age next year? Is it 19? Right. Let me illustrate here. You might not be able to catch, right? So I said me, this is me, that's my mom here. So if our difference this year in 2020 is 20 years, what's my difference in 2021? Is it 20 or 19? Hmm, it will still be 20, right? If next year is 19, then 20 years time will be the same age, right? So that cannot be possible, right? It means 20, 40, if, it, if we keep reducing 20, 40, me and my mom will be the same age. So that won't happen. So remember, in age, the difference in age between two person remains constant no matter how many years it, you advance yeah, in your age. So in this question, let's go through this. Mr. Tan is 40 years old and his son is 30 years younger. How many years ago was Mr. Tan six times as old as his son? Right, we already have this discussion and we know that age difference is constant. So the age difference between Mr. Tan and the son is 30. So next, in how many years time was Mr. Tan six times as old as the son? So we have to draw Mr. Tan and we draw the son. The sun is one unit. Mr. Tan will be six units. One, two, three, four, five, six. And the difference in H is here, right? The difference in H here is 30. Right, 30. So can you tell me this 30 is how many units? Six, five, mostly five. Okay, you can see a lot of five. Right, let's count. One, two, three, four, five. Right, it's five units. So five units is equals to 30. How about one unit? One unit is six, right? So we take 30, divide by five, we will get six. So one unit is six, what's next? How many years ago was Mr. Tan six times as old as the son? So we know that Mr. Tan is 40. So what's Mr. Tan's age in this comparison? Can you tell me? Right. From here, we know that, let's talk about the sun. The sun is six years old, right? Okay, we can work on the sun, we can work on the dad. So the sun, what's the sun present age over here? What's the sun present age? Right, 40. Okay, I think you got it, 40 minus 30. The sun is 10 years old. So when Mr. Tan is six times as old as the son, the son is six years old. 
So how many years ago was that? How many years ago was that? Four, right? Okay, it's 10 minus four, or sorry, 10 minus six. That will give you four, right? Or how many years ago? Four years ago. So your answer is four years ago. Another way to look at this is we work out Mr. Tan's age, which is also possible. Let me use another pen. Okay, we work out Mr. Tan. We already know Mr. Tan's present age is 40. Okay, over here, Mr. Tan is one, two, three, four, five, six. Six units. Six units indicates six times six. That is 36, right? So 36. His present age is 40. When he was 36, he was six times as old as the sun. So 40 minus 36, you will still get four, right? You still get four. So four is the answer to this question, right? So this is how I would do it. How do you arrive at your answer? How many of you use Mr. The, the sun's age to calculate the answer? And how many of you use Mr. Tan's age to calculate the answer? Right, you use Mr. Tan, you type MP. You use the sun, right, you type just S. Mm, okay, I see. Right. Okay, you use Mr. Tan. Okay, Amara use the sun. Okay, Brunel use MT. All right, good. MT stands for Mr. Tan. Huh? So, okay, so this is how we solve the question. Okay, because in our earlier discussion, we already agreed that the age difference between two persons is constant. So from here, at present, if the son is 30 years younger, in the past, it's also 30 years younger, right? So first of all, we establish that the age difference is 30. Then the next thing is, we draw a model that represents Mr. Tan was six times as old as his son. So one, two, three, four, five, six units here, right? There are six units here. Then here, the son is one unit. The difference <clears throat> is five units. And this five units is equals to 30. So one unit is equals to six. So after that, we take the son's present age, which is 10 minus his uh, age which when he was six. So we arrive at four. So the answer is four years ago. We also agree that we can use Mr. Tan's information to solve the question as well. So we, are, we find out that in the past, Mr. Tan was 36 years old. So his present age is 40. So 40 minus 36, we also get four. All right. How many of you got the answer just like me, type me too, right? Those who got it, those who are following my model drawing and you're drawing, following step by step, can you type follow or F for short, right? Okay, great. That's good. So now if you're ready to do question two, can you type Q2? Then we will start on the next question. Okay, let's carry on with the next question. So here in this question, it states that Mr. Ismail is thrice as old as the sun, right? Given that he is 24 years old, given that he is 24 years older than his son, how many years ago was Mr. Ismail four times as old as his son? So what are the important information? Firstly, this is Mr. Ta Ismail is thrice as old as the sun. And we know that he is 24 years older. 24 years older is the age difference. So let's state the age difference here. <clears throat> so this is 24. So now, based on this information, we're able to draw a model. So we have Mr. Ismail.
and then we have the sun. So Mr. Ismail is twice. So the H difference here. is 24. So the value of these two units over here is equals to 24. So can you tell me what's the value of one unit? Okay, thank you Lloyd. Thank you Xavier, Srimaran. So it's 24 divided by 2, and we arrive at 12. Right, 12 is the answer. Okay, so we know from here, let's fill up the boxes that the son was 12 years old. And then can you tell me, Mr. Ismail, present age? Okay, his present age is 3 times of 12, right? Which will give us, thank you, Rex, we'll have 36. But that's not the end. The next part is the asking, how many years ago was Mr. Ismail four times as old as the sun? So now we have to draw another cell model below. So we have to draw Mr. Ismail again. But this time we have to draw him four times as old as the sun, right? So we we'll draw again. So next round, now, he is four units. The sun is one unit based on this information here. The age difference, we all agree, will not change, right? Whether you go back into the future or move into the past. So this is 24. So can you tell me these three units, if these three units is 24, what's the value of one unit? Okay, thank you, Renel. Right. So, thank you, everybody. Thank you, Amara. Thank you, Jana. So, it's 24 divided by 3, and we arrive at 8. So, the sun was eight years old when Mr. Ismail is four times his age. So can you answer the question for me? How many years ago was that? When he was eight years old? Okay, thank you, Lloyd. Who else do you have the answer? Let's see. Okay, Jasmine. Jasmine got it. Renel got it. Evangeline got it. So, 12 is the son's present age. 8 is the sun's age in the past. So that was 4 years ago, right? So your answer to this question is 4 years ago. Right, 4 years ago. Okay, how many of you have 4 years just like me? Type me too. Okay, if you're following my instructions, same thing, give me a follow, right? Or in short. <laughs> me three, right? That's good. Okay, thank you, Brayden. Thank you, Lloyd. Thank you, Xavier. Okay, thank you, Evangeline. That's good. So, okay, for those who need to copy, please go ahead. I'm going to read the question one more time, right? So, what uh, I'm going to summarize what we have just completed. So, Mr. Ismail is thrice as old as his son. So, thrice is a key word. So, given that he is 24 years older than his son. So the age difference we can establish is 24. So in how many years time was Mr. Ismail four times as old as his son? So in this question, we need to draw the model two times, right? We don't draw two sets of model. The first set of model is to establish what is their present age. So we find out based on our model that the son is 12 years old. Now in the past, he is four times as old as the sun. So we draw again four units versus one unit. 
we established that this three units is equal to 24, right? So 24 is three units. Therefore, one unit is equal to 24 divided by three, and we get eight. So we're supposed to find out how many years ago was that. So the sun's present age is 12. The sun's age in the past is eight. So 12 minus eight equals to four, right? So four is the answer to this question. Okay, great. So if you're ready, can you type question three? Then we move on to the next question. All right, let's move on. Huh? All right, good. Let's move on. So this is, just now the two questions that we completed is constant difference of whole numbers, right? So now we're going to do constant difference that involve fractions. So in this, let me read the question first. A crate of oranges weigh 6,300 grams. When it is one third full, its mass is 2,300 grams. What is the mass of the crate when it is empty? So from here, what should we do? So the crate is the one that is repeated because it is implied. It's, it's, but a lot of students, they are confused, right? They do not know that the crate is the one that is repeated. So once you know it's repeated, right, it will be quite easy. So here it says that in the first statement, it says that the crate with oranges weighs 6,003. When it is one third full, it has a mass of 2,003, 300. So what's the mass of the crate when it's empty? So we can establish that there's a crate. I use the letter C to represent the crate. And then this is, all the oranges. We also can establish that when it's full, right, there's three units of oranges based on the denominator. So we draw it this way. Next, the same crate with one third of the, when it's one third full, that means instead of three units, it's just fill up with one unit. So now, the crate with all the oranges, when it's full, is 6,300 grams. The crate, when it's one third full, is 2,003. So we have a difference here of two units. Can you help me find out what's the value of these two units? Okay, thank you everybody. Please help me calculate. So we will have, right, thank you, Jesseline. Thank you, Evangeline. Diva, I think you want zero shot. Okay, Anjali, correct. So it's 4,000. So two units is 4,000. So what do we need to find out next? What is the mass of the crate when it is empty? So before we can do that, we need to find the value of one unit, right? So can you tell me what's the value of one unit? What should we do? We should do a division, right? 4,000 divided by 2. And we have 2,000. So one unit is 2,000. So now, without me prompting you, right? Can you tell me how do we find the mass of the crate? No, we don't end at 10. <laughs> We're going to end soon in about 5-10 minutes time. Right. Yeah, right now you're correct. We, we end around 9 o'clock. Okay. So one unit is 2,000 grams. So how do we find the crate? Anybody have the answer? So the crate is 2003 minus 2000 and we will have 
300 grams, right? 300 grams is the answer to this question. Right, let's move a bit faster. So how many of you have 300? Same as me, type me two. Right. <clears throat> okay, that's great. If you are following also, please type a follow so I understand who am I going to talk to later and give more coaching. Right, thank you, Jesslyn. Thank you, Rex. So let's move quickly to the next question. So a jug of milk weighs 1,004. When it is full, when it's one quarter full, its mass is 1,250 grams. What is the mass of the jug when it's empty? Same thing, right? So we're going to draw, the, we represent the jug with a letter J. So we know that based on the denominator, we need, when it's full, it must be four units. So we're going to draw four units. When the jug is one quarter full, means it's filled with one unit. So when it's full, it is 1,004. When it's one quarter full, it's 1,250. Can you find out for me what's the value of three units? Okay, thank you, Amber. 1,400 minus 1,250. We arrive at 150. Thank you, everybody. 150. So if three units is 150, can you help me find out what's the value of one unit? What should I do with this number? Divide by, think again, Amber. Divide by three, right? Divide by three. And what's the answer? Thank you, Amara. We will have 50. Right, 50. So if one unit is 50, let's put the unit here. Can you tell me what is the mass of the jug? Okay. So the jug is 1,250 minus 50. We will arrive at 1,200, right? So the answer for this question is 1,200. Okay, how many of you have 1,200 as well? Just like me, type me too. Okay, all right. Okay, good. If you're following also, type me, type F. Okay, or follow, then I will have. Yes, all right. Thank you, Joanna. Thank you, Braden. Thank you, Renell. Okay, good. So I hope you understand how do you do uh, how to approach questions involving a uh, constant difference. There's two sets of major questions. One is the H. The second type is the hidden jug or the hidden crate, right? That is filled with oranges and liquid. So now let's move on to the bonus question. So we have three bonus questions, then we'll call it a night. So let's move on to the next page. So here it states that a library has a total of 5,670 books. The number of English books is twice as many as Chinese books and four times as many as Malay books. How many more Chinese books than Malay books are there in the library? And how many English books are there in the library? So the first question tells us that there's a, tells us the total number of books is 5,670. Now the next one tells us that the English compared to Chinese is twice. So we're going to draw English books compared to Chinese books where we draw two big units compared to one big unit. Oh, you did this before. That's great. And we also know that the English books is four times the Malay book. So the Malay book is the smallest, right? So Malay book is one, one unit, one small unit. And we need to cut the English book into four units. So if this portion is two units, then the Chinese book is also 
two units. All right, so this is how we draw the comparison model based on all these keywords. Can follow so far? So far, so good. <clears throat> so next, the total number, can you tell me what's the total number of books in this question? Five thousand six hundred and seventy, right? So now this is equals to how many units here at the side? Seven units. So if seven units is equals to five thousand six hundred and seventy, what's the value of one unit? So we take five thousand six hundred and seventy divided by seven. Okay, give me an answer. Thank you. So you will have 810, right? 810. So now we can answer the question. How many more Chinese books than Malay books are there in the library? Based on our observation, it's one unit. So therefore, answer for A will be 810. Very good. How many English books are there in the library? So I'm not going to show you how, you're going to sh share with me what's your answer for number for part B. Okay, Amara, you got the answer. How about the rest of you? A, okay. how come you got different answer? Which is the correct answer? Braden has an answer. So for B, we need to take 800. You know that English has four units. So it's 810 multiplied by 4, right? So you multiply by 4, what do you get? 8. Okay, great. So when you multiply by 4, you should get 3,240. That will be your answer. So you need to do some calculation. Huh? Mental calculation sometimes doesn't work. You need to show, and you need to show the teacher the actual working. All right, Justin, you got it. Finally, that's good. Divide got it. So this is the answer for both. How many of you got this answer just like me? Type me too. Right, if you're following, type follow or F for short. <clears throat> okay, do a quick copy. Then once you're okay, can you help me to type question two? Then we solve the second last question already. Then we can call it at night. Okay, question two. All right, let's move on to the question. Wong Lin bought twice as many cupcakes as muffins from a shop. Each cupcake cost three dollars and each muffin cost two. If she spent a total of six hundred and forty dollars, how many cupcakes did she buy? How many of you know how to solve this question? Okay, right. So this is how I will solve it, right? Here are the keywords. Wong Lin bought twice as many cupcakes as muffins. So therefore, in one group, there will be, twice means there's two cup, for every two cupcakes, there should be one muffin. So this is how we will do this. Yep, right. So you, you solve along with me, or you can use your own method. Then you start. Let, let, then you let me know whether you can get the same answer as me. So one cupcake is three dollars. So there's two sets of three, and one muffin is two dollars. Those are following. What's the total in one group? What's the total value in one group? Eight. Right. One group is eight. So if she spend. So the total spending or the total amount that was uh, paid out was 640. Right, imagine you buy one box. Every box has two cupcakes and one muffin and it costs you $8. So how many boxes of $8, how many boxes can you buy with 640 if one box is eight? So we take, so the number of groups We we'll take 640 divided by 8. What do we get? Work it out. Let me know.
go. You are quite fast with your calculation, right? So 640 divided by 8 will give us 80. So 80 is the uh, number of, a number of groups is 80 groups. So now we can answer the question. If she spent this amount, how many cupcakes did she buy? Okay, one group has how many cupcakes? Two, right? So if we want to find the total number of cupcakes, for cupcakes, so we have 80 groups. Each group has two. What's, our, what's my final answer? All right. Thank you, Renel. Thank you, Diva. Thank you, Evangeline and Lloyd. So we will get 160 as well, right? So 160 is the answer to this question. Okay, with this, how many of you have the same answer just like me? 160 right you know the drill you type me or me too then if you are able to follow my instruction please type follow but if you are lost please type a question mark and i try my best to explain to you okay because these are the questions that are from section c already okay i'm so excited we're going to do a last question already so if you're ready can you type question three Okay, let's move to the last question. So Claire, in this question, Claire multiplied a number by seven and the answer, and got the answer A. Using the same number, Claire multiplied it by two and got the answer B. The difference between A, answer A and answer B was 18.5. What was the number? That's part A and part B is what was the sum of answer A and answer B. How many of you know how to do this? Can you share with me? Is that a yes? You can do it, right? Mm. Max is ITK. Okay, Amber say yes. Okay, a lot of ITK. Mm. All right, so let's try. So. The, the clue to solve this question is there's a number, right? It says that there's a number. This number, when you multiply by seven, you got an A. So let's let this number be one unit. So you need to multiply this number by seven, right? So this number, so one unit times seven, that will give you A. So A is equals to one unit times seven. So A is equals to seven units. How about B? B, using the same number, you multiply by two, right? So, and you get B. So this number is one unit. You times two, you get two units. The difference between these two A and B is 18.5. So that's how many units of difference? What is A minus B? Right, A minus B is seven units minus two units. That will give us five units. Right, so five units is 18.5. How about one unit? So we take 18.5 divided by five. Have you done division by decimals already? Right, you have, right? Yeah, why one unit? Because this is an unknown number. So we need to assign a unit to it so that we can solve this, right? So if you divide correctly, you should be getting 3.7, right? Because Decimals is in P4, All right? We got it. Thank you, Lloyd. Thank you, Amara. Thank you, Renel. So one unit is 3.7. So what is the number? So answer for A, part A, one unit 
the number is equal to one unit and one unit is 3.7. So now, B, what's the sum of A and B? 18.5 is stated in the question. Uh, it's stated here. So B, what's the sum of A and B? So to A is 7 units. B is 2 units. So what is the sum of A plus B? How many units? Right. Together, we will have 9 units, right? Because 2 plus 7 is 9 units. So if 1 unit is 3.7, so 9 units is equal to 9 times 3.7. Can you help me multiply? And let me know your answer. Right, Amber, Amber got it. Braden got it. Diva has an answer. How about the rest? Are you able to get it? Okay, so your final answer should be 33.3, 33 right? That is the answer to part B. Okay, good. So um, this question could be uh, slightly harder because it's a bit tricky because of this question, this part here, right? That says there's a number, there's an unknown number. So this is the part that is tricky, but other than that, are you able to understand my explanation? If you can understand, can you type OK? All right. OK, thank you. That's good. So now let me wrap up and tell you what's happening next week. So uh, I hope you enjoyed my lesson. If you enjoyed my lesson, can you give me a thumbs up or so on? So I know that, OK, that will give me energy to share more next week, right? To share more with you next week. Okay, okay, give me a smiley face. That would be appreciated as well. Okay, great. So we're gone through the last part already. So let me go through here with you. <clears throat> so uh, thank you for joining us. Now, that's the end of today's session. Our lesson two of the revision will be next Monday same time at 8 o'clock, right? So thank you for joining us today. If you have any questions, please contact us either via email. Our email is over there or you can type, uh, contact us through WhatsApp. Now, if you want to find out more about our program, right? Please visit our website at parkwaymath.com, right? If you visit us at parkwaymath.com, right? Let me show you how is it. <clears throat> So this is the website. So you can either go to contact us and drop us a mail, right? Or you can sign up for a trial lesson over here. So <clears throat> that's all I have for you. I'll be here for the next few minutes if you need to um, ask any questions. If not, right, then I'll see you next week. When you go, before you go, can you say goodbye? Then you can lock off already. Goodbye, everybody. You can start waving. I can see all of you. Huh? Right, thank you. See you. I'm uh, Mr. Siu. I'll see you next week. Goodbye.